How many times have I said it? How many times have I said it? Don't fish off the company pier. Don't dip your pen in the company ink. And other related cliches. I have told you, don't ever even talk to the women in the office, much less have sex with them, unless you wouldn't mind losing your job. Now, although um, we've got amazing psychographics on this program, uh, very high-income individuals do listen. Highly educated individuals listen. People um, with professional positions listen. I'd be willing to bet that you, listening to me right now, are not a CEO of a company. I'll bet you're not even uh, the president of your company, in most cases. And I'd be willing to bet that you think the rules are different for the guys at the top than they are for you, or by the same token that, uh, that I'm not serious, or that I don't know what I'm talking about. But uh, here is the story from Chicago. Many of you have emailed it to me because uh, it proves what I've been saying all along. This is um, from the AP. Boeing Company CEO Harry Stonecipher brought back from retirement 15 months ago to boost the aerospace manufacturer's tainted image. Or at least he's been forced out because he tainted it further. <laughs> yes, a new ethics scandal involving an affair he has had this year with a female company executive. In a stunning announcement that left the exact circumstances behind the ouster unclear, Boeing said the 68-year-old president and chief executive officer had resigned at the board's request a day earlier for improper behavior while carrying out the consensual relationship. Chairman Lou Platt said the affair by itself did not violate the code of business con conduct at the company, where a string of defense scandals has raised questions about the way Boeing obtains its lucrative contracts. But an internal investigation that started because of an employee's complaint discovered, quote, some issues of poor judgment involving Stone Cipher, who is married. Platt refused repeated requests to be more specific and did not identify the female executive whom he said remains with Boeing. Platt said, quote, The board concluded that the facts reflected poorly on Harry's judgment and would impair his ability to lead the company. Attempts to reach Stone Cipher for comment were unsuccessful. His telephone number is unlisted. And that, that's, so, that's so the chick he's been uh, seeing on the side can't call his wife at home and rat him out. Of course, his number's unlisted. <laughs> and uh, Boeing spokesman John Dern said the company did not know his whereabouts. This is the CEO. This guy's the chief executive officer of Boeing, and it, it just took a weekend, and suddenly they do not know his whereabouts. Chief Financial Officer James Bell, 56, will serve as acting CEO until a successor is found, but is not a candidate for the permanent job, blah, blah, blah. Just amazing. So, um, looking through this story here, I'm just interested in the juicy parts. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Platt said on a conference call with analysts and reporters that Boeing executives learned of the affair on February 25th after a worker saw correspondence between the two. He said the company's investigation found that some allegations made by the employee were untrue, such as claims that Stone Cipher had influenced the woman's career or salary. However, Platt said Stone Cipher acknowledged the affair, and the company concluded that his behavior violated a code which states that Boeing employees will not engage in conduct or activity that might raise questions about its honesty, impartiality, or integrity. But then, declining to elaborate, Platt said, We think Harry is entitled to some privacy concerning the details of this relationship. You're not going to get any, Harry. Every dirty nugget is going to come out. i tell you what. And by the way, you guys are in Chicago. Oprah Winfrey is right there knocking at the back door. Hey! You're going to hear every dirty detail of this little affair. 
Let me tell you what. Stone Cipher was also dismissed from Boeing's board, which he'd been a member of since joining the company from McDonnell Douglas when the two companies merged in 1997. Rather than fire him outright, the company allowed him to resign, thus making him eligible for what Platt called a standard retirement package that any other employee would get. You know that's going to be millions of dollars. By the way, the guy is 68 years old. Good work. Uh, this is why I tell you, boys. You know, I like getting laid at least as much as anybody listening to this program. But you don't do it at the office. You don't. This is the kind of thing that can happen to you. I just can't believe that somebody 68 years old with all that experience, all that expertise. I mean, the guy turned Boeing around. Boeing was in a tailspin. He turned it around. Then he loses his job because he's nailing some chick at the office. I mean, uh, how much proof do you boys need? It's John. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? How's it no, going? I'm doing okay, John. All right. Hey, um, I'm actually an employee at uh, Boeing in Huntington Beach. And uh, just got word of this this morning when I got into work, but... I think it's a little bit ridiculous that he's held accountable and uh, this other employee that they're not telling us who it is is uh, still working there. And her who was having sex with a married man. Right. And her ethics aren't called into question at all and she's not asked to resign. That's a uh, very, very important point you're making here. So uh, I just don't think that's uh, fair to the men. Yeah, but it just proves the point that you don't want to, uh, you know, as you said, stick your pen in the Inc. or what, however... Company Inc., that's right. right. Don't put yeah, your pen in the company ink well. Yeah, that's always a, you know, a priority of mine. No matter how good looking they are, no matter what, you've got to stay away from them. Otherwise, it's your job that's on the line, not theirs. That's exactly right. And, and by the way, for, in so many ways, I mean, in this case, in the Boeing case, uh, the woman did not uh, uh, turn uh, the guy in or anything. They, they both admitted it was consensual. Uh, but but the point is that there are women who cry rape. There are women who cry sexual harassment. There are women who complain about a hostile work environment. They threaten lawsuits. Uh, anytime you get into an affair with a woman at the office, all of these things are possible. That's exactly right. And 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 women rarely pay the price for this stuff. And this is just another example of that. And I don't I don't think it's fair in the least bit. But then again, he should have known better. He's a smart individual he's a married man well, and by the way the... by the way he's 68 years old <laughs> yeah besides that and the you know the magnifying glass has been on every little action that we do there so he should have known better than that his ass was going to be in a sling if he you know if any word of this got out so you know it's his own fault but at the same time i think she should be held accountable as well Good boy, John. Thank you. This is William on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how are you doing, Tom? I'm okay, William. Are you there? No, I left the room. You left the room. That's not good. I think that with uh, Stone Cipher, I think they're going to find out or at some point. people. Are, I think a lot of people didn't like the guy, and I think the CEOs of the board got rid of him. I think they probably knew about his the way he dealt with people, females, along well, uh, well, uh, the You know, you make an interesting point, because I find it hard to believe that a guy at 68 would suddenly start diddling around with somebody at the office. Yeah, I think I'm going to try that. Probably not a first-time offender. Just guessing. Just a guess. I think uh, some, of, some of the people, he was probably going to uh, sell off some of the assets of the company that people didn't want to hold off higher up, and it'll probably trickle down at some point, so that's the bigger part of the picture. Well, he seemed to know what he was doing as far as running the business was concerned. He knew how to make a lot of money for the company. Well, that's what the company's there for. Or make the appearance of. You mean, you, you, how do you make the appearance of making money? Was he misstating earnings or lying about profits? No, I think he was just cashing out a lot of the uh, subsidiary businesses. Well, uh, many... Up the cash value of the company. That's what they're doing at Sears and Kmart. I mean, there's a list of companies that do that kind of thing. 
Um, when uh, I'm sure when AT and T and SBC merge, they're going to be selling off a lot of those those companies' assets. That's not uncommon. And you had uh, a situation here with a huge merger, Boeing with Donald Douglas. I mean, uh, sure, you'll probably feel pain as an ex-employee, but the job of a CEO is to make company profitable. His job is not to make you comfortable. Happy day for me to hear that on him, though. Did you lose your job because of him? Uh, more or less, yes, I did. All right, so... When he, when he came back uh, on as CEO... That was the reason. Our the department I was in that was the beginning of a, a little bit of a spiral in that company. So you have an axe to grind. Uh, sure. All right. Just we're just stating your position. That's all. I'm not gonna lie to you. Okay. Good. William, thank you. Certainly. Appreciate the call. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. It's Chris on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Oh, good evening, Tom. This is an honor. I know. <laughs> First time, long time, sir. Must be difficult for you. Oh, I'll, 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 I'll get through it. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, uh, anyway, I wanted to uh, point out uh, one of the things about uh, the subject is that it's just not worth it. It, it is absolutely not worth the, uh, the mental anguish that you're going to go through, especially where in my case, here's what happened to me. I was stupid enough to... Uh, to do this, and uh, I thought it was, hey, uh, I've always wanted to do this. I thought it might be some, you know, some bragging rights, you know, girl at work flirting with me. Figured I'd see how far we could take it. And we were in a period uh, at the company of a lot of moves. So we had new wings being built, moving a lot of people around. So sections of the building would remain empty for very long periods of time. So we thought, mm, go in there, play around for a little while. Well, my story has a happy, happy ending, but not the not the type of happy ending that you would think, but uh, it was happy when you consider the alternative. Somebody walked in, and uh, we figured we were busted. We figured we were caught. And uh, the person, whoever it was, left, and I figured I was just done. I figured out that, that that's it. My boss was uh, not talking to me for the rest of the day, not returning calls or emails, and uh, just generally uh, avoiding me. And I thought, okay, well, uh, I'm going to have a pink slip in the morning. That's, that's it. And... Uh, Fortunately, I dodged a bullet. Turns out he was not, he was, uh, you know, he was beefed off about something else entirely. But it's just not worth the night of sleep that you will lose thinking, you know, should I be calling the uh, EDD in the morning? It's it's not worth it. Don't try it. Look out for numero uno. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Appreciate the call. Nick on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom Likas, my, my father. What's up? Uh, not much, son. How are you? I'm a 20-year employee of the McDonnell Douglas Company. Yeah. It's hard for me to say Boeing. makes me gag. The only reason why Boeing bought McDonnell Douglas was for the C-17 program, which is cash cow. It's the only reason why Boeing's making any money. They make a crap aircraft. All the customers that wanted the commercial airplane, they wanted to uh, buy uh, McDonnell Douglas product because they didn't want to buy from Boeing. Since they sold it off, they went to Airbus instead, so therefore losing all kinds of jobs in Southern California. Another name I go real quick. I wanted to I told Dino this, but uh, Stone Cipher, his nickname for me is Stone Spain because he's such an ass. He's also known as the Hatchet Man because he likes to lay off a lot of people, and he's not well liked. Well, that is his job, though, is to make the company more profitable. And in well, some cases, when you have a merger, that means uh, eliminating positions. How about selling products? That's what makes the freaking money, doesn't it? Well, I, I agree with you, and Airbus is kicking Boeing's ass, and it's pretty well known. Anybody who reads Business Week or the Wall Street Journal knows that. I'll talk to Delta. Talk to American. Tell them, ask them what airplanes they wanted to buy. They'll tell you, they'll tell you, Ben Donald Douglas. Uh, Boeing just shut it all down. They didn't want to, no competition against their aircraft. Apparently, they're getting some big-time subsidies up in, in Washington and so forth, and and uh, they just want to shut it down. They just want us for the military part of it. But matter of fact, uh, I'm thinking... But see, it sounds to me like there's people who have an axe to grind against this guy. And aren't really dealing with why he was fired. He wasn't fired for laying people off or selling off no. divisions. Well, he, you know what it is? he was it's fired right. for having an affair. My girlfriend, my girlfriend seems to think that uh, his wife probably tipped him off so she can get half, like like you always preach against. You know what I mean? That's interesting. You have to wonder who turned them in. Probably the wife. Well, it says here that it was another employee who saw correspondence between the two of them. Uh, of course, there's some internal documents. There was nothing said in the in the. Uh, in the company website or, you know, insiders at work, you know, and, and you know, that's all hearsay anyways, you know. Now, that's uh, what the AP is saying here. 
Well, you know, I don't know what you know. I don't you know. You know we're going to get this whole story. You know we have not heard the end of this story. That's true. But you know what though? I mean, everybody every day is out there screwing somebody, and the only reason why is because we've been in the news lately, and that's the only reason why that, that he's on the news. If it wasn't for the ethics thing and all that, you think this would be a story because he's dipping his his his, uh, his pin in the company? It wouldn't be nothing. It would be nothing. So you think they're not even telling the truth about why he was fired? Uh, I think Actually, they, they're going to say they didn't fire him, but of course he was fired. I think in light of all the ethics deal, uh, you know, that they've had in the past, I think this is what they're doing, just to try to make themselves look good. So that they don't. I want to know why the woman who is screwing a married man is still working at Boeing. And that, apparently that ethics lapse is perfectly okay. <laughs> apparently. Right? Well, technically she didn't do nothing wrong, wrong other than have uh, sex with a man. Uh, she had but, sex with a married man. That's true. And she knew he was a married man. Yeah, yeah. The guy's a grandfather, for God's sake. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, anyways, if you want to find him, look in Newport Beach. He's got a mansion in Newport Beach or in Palm Springs also. All right, because they say they can't find him. So uh, maybe He's in Newport Beach or in Palm Springs. Go look for him. He's there. All right, very good. Thank you, Nick. Later. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Uh, let's say hello to Don on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Professor. Hello, Don. What's up besides the ladies? And yes, I do care. I'm doing great. Great. Uh, we have this show on Life Network in Canada called Sex, Toys, and Chocolate. And we had this episode on last week about hooking up in the workplace. And their recommendation was that, oh, yeah, it's all good. Go for it. And, you know, I've listened to you for a while now. and <laughs> I, mean, I was speechless. I mean, Who is this? The CBC recommending this? No, it's Life Network. Okay. Sex, Toys, and Chocolate, a national show. How irresponsible is that? Oh, it's completely wrong. Yeah. I, I, and I, I don't know. I, I can only imagine that Canada is worse in the lawsuit game only because Canada is even more politically correct than the United States. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I listen to everything you say, and I won't, I won't even talk to a woman at work. Yeah, you can't even say uh, anything more than good morning and good evening or can I have a pencil. Because the minute exactly. you start talking about anything, you are preparing yourself for a lawsuit. Exactly. Can you take me out Lacey Peterson style, Tom? Oh, that would be tasteless to do that. I am as offended as you are when I hear that. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Chris? I care. Good. I'm from uh, Portland. Just wanted to talk about this issue with Boeing. I, I think uh, people need to know the difference between making good money for the company and, and just making a mistake. He wasn't uh, fired for, for, laying, for laying people off. He was fired for laying pipe. He was. Although, really, is, is that a reason to fire somebody? We're not talking about a sexual harassment suit here. Both people consented. No, no, it's he, he just made a mistake. Everybody makes a mistake in different ways, but I think I definitely think that people need to understand that he, he did a great job for the company. This was just a mistake. They shouldn't have fired him, first of all. They should have, yeah. you know, I think they definitely should have explored some, some different uh, ways of handling the, the situation, and, and that bitch certainly should have been, uh, she should have been fired, you know, as well. If you're going to fire one, you might as well fire both. Yeah, the um, I, I got to tell you, uh, the the woman is still working there, and that really, really bothers me. It's horrible. It's it's absolutely horrible. I work for probably the third largest financial services company in the in the country, and you know, and stuff like this happens all the time. And uh, I think they're they're trying to to make a mountain out of a molehill just because he was one of the higher ups. If you think if something like this happened to somebody running the mail room, this would be a this would be this big of a deal. Well, again, I think there's much more to this story, but it, it just reemphasizes what I always say. Stay away from women at the workplace. And I don't just mean don't have sex with them. I mean don't talk to them. No, I don't care if you're looking at, uh, at Madonna or, I don't know, the hottest person you, you know on the planet. If, uh, I don't care if they, if they look like Pam Anderson. They don't even so much as look at them across, uh, across the table, the cubicle in the lunchroom. I, I wouldn't talk to them. I wouldn't even look at them. Thank you so much, Chris, for the call. I appreciate it. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Brian on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. 
Hey, what's up, Tom? How's it going? I'm doing okay. All right. Hey, man. The, I had just got fired from a job, a Fortune 500 company, big, big company, and basically I wasn't union, and these girls were, and the first girl, basically, I had written her up for some discipline, and, you know, she was a, a horrible employee, and so she filed sexual harassment against me, and basically, two days later, it was just dropped, because it was just ridiculous, but the fact that she did it, it was just incredible. Well, it just reminds you again what I'm telling you boys all the time. And, and I've never had any type of relation with this girl whatsoever. So then I ended up, uh, my friend, who's another female worker at the workplace, I've known her for a little while. I considered her a friend of mine. She found out. A couple of days later, she filed a sexual harassment case against me, too. I'm just, I was blown out of my mind. I've never had any type of relationship with this girl, no sexual, nothing. And she was supposed to be a friend of mine. And all of a sudden, I mean, that basically did it for, you know, the company, and I was just, I was expendable. And I just could not believe it. You don't, it's unreal how they can just pop up and say, oh, this person talked to me wrong or looked at me wrong. Or, and even your friends, you know, you say something and boom. You know, you can't even make friends with anybody at a workplace anymore. Well, that's what I've been telling you, boys. I've been telling you for a while now. Anthony, hello. Hey, how you doing, Don? I'm okay. Long time. Cool. Hey, you know, it was kind of interesting. I, I kind of work at Boeing, and all day today, man, that was nothing but the talk. Um, couldn't believe when I came in, um, looked at my email, I thought it was a fake email. But the problem that he got fired was is that we got a code of conduct that we're supposed to sign. It talks about the catch-me-all, you know, doing things uh, ethically and don't do anything ethic, uh, unethical and things of that nature. All right, so what about the woman who had sex with a married man? Was that ethical? I'm not even going to say anything about that. No, no, well, you're anonymous. Say something about it. I think she should be fired, too. Of course she should be fired, too. She should. This is the double standard we're always talking about. I, I'm telling you, she should have been fired, too. The thing is, about 10 days ago is when the papers that came out said that. We had a major ethics reindoctrination. Every year we're supposed to sit down. Everybody in Boeing sits down for about four hours. We go through this big, huge, long sit down and think what we're doing right and he comes out there and he preaches his ethics as well and then we turn around and somebody probably got a conscience the next day and says you know what i want to do this and they and they laid it into it this is just some stuff we were talking about we were thinking about it we don't know but hey you know this thing that he comes out there and he's a big guy the big chief we all report up to him I and mean, he should be setting the example and you know i don't report to her though but in my mind, you know, my uh, my ethics, I think she should be fired as well. Of course she should be fired as well. I, I think she should be fired as well. But she won't be. Oh, of course not. Because she's going to come out there and... Something happened there. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Daryl on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, John, this is Gerald. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Thank you. Hey, I just want to reaffirm what you've been talking about this whole time. It's all about sexism. I mean, women are always complaining about how we do it to them, but they don't understand that by making themselves seem so vulnerable, they're doing the same thing to us. Yep. No, you're absolutely right. It's all about the double standard, and I think it's wrong that she wasn't fired. I mean, she made it was consenting. Yeah, it was wrong that he did it, but did she get involved too? Yeah. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but, yeah, but again, um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, uh, if there's no sexual harassment suit, I don't think it's the company's business. If the company's going to start uh, interfering in who people are having sex with, there's an awful lot of people at Boeing who are fishing off the company pier. I guarantee it. Oh, well, me too. And, well, are they going to fire all of them, too? Is everybody who sent an email today got to worry that uh, uh, the company will be uh, eavesdropping? Probably. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. But I want to know how the chick who screwed a married man, a grandfather, uh, is still working for the company, and she is not uh, considered to have violated the uh, ethics of Boeing. How old is she? Doesn't say. Huh. See, I think that, I really think it's wrong, and I think she should be fired. And, um, oh, what was I going to say? I don't know. But, you know, I just want to call and agree, say I'm totally for what you're talking about. Thank you, Daryl. All right. Appreciate the call, 1-800-5800-TOM. 
Jim on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. What's up, man? Not much. Hey, you know what? I think what it, what it boils down to, I, I don't think it's a gender issue like you're, like you're talking about. Of course it is. Well, I, I, any, any company you work for, it's... Uh, the man- management or senior management can't be involved with any of the subordinates. I think that's what it comes down well, to. Well, first of all, this person is not just any subordinate. She is also an executive. And by the way, there's a very vague code of ethics, right? Uh, but- as far as I can see here. And, 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 is, and, and, and having sex with a married man it doesn't appear to be any more ethical than a married man having sex with anybody else. I, I, don't, I don't think they're breaking it down by ethics. I think they're breaking it down by liability. And I think it, I mean, if he's higher up on the food chain, he's a target and they want to they want to minimize their... But she already culture. told the company it's consensual. I mean, if she tried to sue them after going to them and telling them it was consensual, she'd have a very hard time bringing a case. She told them it was consensual. How many women change their mind, Tom? The, the fact is, if she is already on the record as saying it's consensual, she'd have a very long road to hoe trying well, to then come down and sue later on. You know, I, I, you're, and you know what? I, I just hate to think of the world like that, and I think you're probably right, but I mean, so... Tony, hello. Hey, Tom, this may not be specific to this case, but there's a lot of women who get to the point of being managers or executives by having affairs with managers or executives when they were younger. And then... When they get to that point, a lot of them did not save and invest their money. So that's when they decide to complain because they need a retirement plan because they didn't save any money while they were young. They could be like 45, 50 years old, yeah. and then they start complaining, and they, they want to cash in their chips then. And another thing, a lot of these guys got to be careful. These, these 25-year-old girls that are just starting out in the business world, they have mothers or aunts or relatives or friends who scored big money back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s with sexual harassment suits, and they're actually going into their career with the agenda of baiting some guy into harassing them either to blackmail them into a promotion or to get some money. I mean, these girls coming out of college right now, they are, they are scary. And another thing, a lot of you guys that have girlfriends that work in, like, offices with a lot of other guys... In my experience, I'll bet you that at least 50% of them are cheating on you. To, to, to get in good, like if, if, if you guys are going out with women that are very, um, what, what do you call it, uh, career motivated and, and, and very, um, I don't know how you said they, they want to move up in the world, there, there's a good chance that they're, they're going to use sex to do it and, and they're going to cheat on you. No, uh, well, I'm sure I'm sure there's some of that going on, Tony. I have no doubt about that. Jamie on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? I'm okay. Okay. Um, I totally agree with you. Women, the woman should be fired. That's not right. That she's still be able to work there. It's totally in the corporate world, public or private. Well, if you're going to use morality as the excuse, well, oh, he violated yeah. the morality of the company. He, I mean, come on, the ethics of our company have been violated. How is it ethical for a woman to have sex with a married man? I totally agree with you, and I think it's BS, and she should be fired. It doesn't matter what level she is. She admits to having sex. That code of conduct works both ways. No matter what level you're at, you have to sign it when you go into the company. Mm-hmm. So there's no reason for her to still be there. I absolutely agree with you. Thank you. Jamie, Bye. thank you. Let's say hello to Cheryl on the Tom Likas Show. Hi, Tom. Hi. How are you? Do you care? Yes, I do. I'm doing great. Good. I just wanted to say that although I believe that this woman should be fired, I think that it's wonderful that she still has to work there because it would be interesting to see how all of her peers view her. I suggest that she probably is going to be having to need to look for another job. Well, I'm sure there are other people there who know who she is, and they will talk. Mm-hmm. And the world will find mm-hmm. out her name. And I hope so. You I keep really your eye do. out, the smoking gun, somebody is going to find out. I think it would be great. I think it would be awesome if that happened to her. Because mm-hmm. it's not right that he winds up losing his job, and she continues to, to work there. Mm-hmm. And I don't think employees should have to uh, be subjected to that as, as somebody in a super, as, as their superior. Yeah. That's wrong. Well, I totally agree with you. Carrie on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. This is Carrie. Yes. Um, well, my point is basically 
kind of like the last caller, and why are we getting all this information that this is a 68-year-old man who's a grandfather and married, and we know nothing about this poor woman who hasn't been fired? That's a very good question. Why don't we know her name? It's the same as in a rape case, you know. Women, men are just brutalized, and we never find out who the woman is. That's a very, very good point. It seems like more of that double standard. I completely agree with you, Carrie. That's a great point there. Uh, this is Charles on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Good evening to you, sir. Yes, sir. I'd like to uh, share an experience with you. I'm a 51-year-old male. I used to work for a major s newspaper here in Seattle. And uh, same thing, I had a woman constantly making passes at me. And I went down to the Human Resources Department and explained the situation. And their response was, you're a guy. Don't worry about it. And... Uh, it continued to go on. This woman would constantly ask me out, and I finally told her no. It upset her so much that she went to the Human Resources Department and said that I was harassing her. I had to go through so many loops and jump, jump. Oh, I was, I'm so upset at the moment. But anyways, it just upsets me that people get away with this. I didn't get fired, but it took me months and months and had to hire an attorney just to get this woman off my yeah, back. See, the time to hire an attorney would have been uh, when the uh, first complaint was lodged by you. You're probably correct. You there. see, that's where you made the mistake was forgetting about it, which well, we'd all naturally like to do. I think it's only human, but uh, uh, you need to document that stuff uh, so that you are cleared right away when somebody comes and makes a claim like that. But the past is the past, so you just move on. But it Well, just... I, I'm not saying it's so much th because you can change it, but there's other people out there right now in your position. I don't want them getting in the same trouble you're in. Yes, you, you're absolutely correct. Make sure they do document it. That's right. Uh, that's all I have to say to you, sir. Charles, thank you very much for the call.